Welcome to the Ask Weldon Show, episode 99. One more to go to episode 100, and here I am back in Uvascula, Finland. We just traveled. That's the reason there was, wasn't any videos, by the way, on, uh, let's see, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I was traveling. I managed to have one in the bank for Tuesday, and then I ran out. So here we are. I'm in Uvascula. I'm going to film episode 99, and tomorrow we're going to do some giveaways. So please make sure to check into episode 100 and follow the instructions to get some cool swag. Okay, question number one from Marcus Cap on Twitter, and he asks, I come home, eat, drink tea, play two games, then I exercise. Play a game, and then I get burned out. How do I avoid it? Okay, so one way to avoid it is to quit your job or your studies or whatever. You said you come home, so this is obviously not your core thing, right? It's the, the end of the day. But barring that, I think that you need to re- uh, conceptualize what it is that League of Legends does for you because if it's something that you are training training in order to go pro or to become better for the sake of some sort of um, like passion outside of a hobby then you're going to get burnt out because you're spending the time during the day doing something else and then this is kind of your extra thing and you have to you have to kind of push through that and you have to find ways of coping so that is something that, for example, I was doing with TSM when I was coaching them, is it was my job to figure out how to push the limits of burned out, but healthily, like in a well, with well-being. And there are various ways you can do that, from meditation to nutrition to exercise to sleep, and you're tackling some of them, it sounds like. You're also tackling tea and taking care of yourself. So if you're doing all of those things, then you want to like ride the cycle of the edge of where you're capable of for as long as you can and not push past it too much because you don't want to get burnt out. And you'll have like really good days where you can do five games and really bad days where you can do two games, but as long as you are maintenancing yourself, you can stretch that limit further and further. Now, if you are not training to go pro or for some passion other than a hobby, if you're, if you're using it as a way to find joy, to find entertainment, to do it as a hobby, to play really, uh, you know, on a fun team with friends, then I think you need to reconceptualize what it means to be burnt out because it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be something that you are trying to sustain through that through that point, right? It should be something that you can come to grips with or become comfortable with the level that you are able to achieve in the time that you're able to, to pursue it. And that's a really important place to get mentally if this is what it serves in your life because the moment that you do that, you will unlock a lot more joy in your ability to play the game and find fun in it because you can say, like, these are the limitations that I, I have based on how I structured my life, based on what my passion is, my pursuit is, my career is, my family, the decisions I've made, the decisions I'm making right now. Therefore, this is the amount of time I have to play. Therefore, this is how good I can, I can think about getting. I can optimize within that time, but I can't be expected to become, you know, the greatest of all time on three games a day when I'm, when I'm tired at the end of the day. Ergo... If you can come to the, the place where you, you revel in the things that are possible for you, then you can find a lot more fun in playing the game and competing in the game at, at what you're going to be uh, doing in terms of like in-game performance. So I hope that that helps and best of luck. Okay, second question from some, comes from Creative Many and he asks how or she how to remind yourself not to go into autopilot mode, even if I try to ask myself questions about the game, I easily drift away. This is a trained mechanistic skill, and it's not necessarily just limited to League of Legends. This is something that you can become more reflective of your current existence and, and what is happening right now in all facets of your life, in everything that you kind of lose yourself in. And so, uh, the only way that I have found to do this reliably in my life is through mindfulness training. And so that's, of course, what I would recommend for you. You can find different ways of doing that. You can join a local group. You can find a local instructor. You can just read books and do it yourself. You can go to headspace.com. You can go to my website and training program, mindgames.gg slash MAC. If you happen to have been raised in a certain way where you are more reflective than the average person, this is something that kind of comes naturally to you. It's not really natural because it's actually kind of programmed the way that you were uh, raised by your parents. If you were not raised that way, then it doesn't come naturally to you. And so it's something that you have to work a little bit harder at. Um, that's, just, that's just what it is. It's, it's reflective practice. Uh, and by practice, I mean the act of doing. I don't mean practices in training. 
Um, so reflective practitioners are people that are able to like do their thing, think about it, maybe at the same time or afterwards. And by the way, reflecting on your play shortly afterwards, almost as good as reflecting on it while it's happening, uh, because you're going to start moving that, you're going to start transitioning that backwards into the game. So the more time that you spend after the game, kind of reviewing and reflecting and watching VODs and asking questions and thinking about it, the more you're going to carry that kind of philosophizing and cogitation into the next game with you because you're just spending more time at it. And it's going to be like invading more and more of your decision making during the game. And so that's one hack you can do outside of mindfulness training. The second hack you can do is visualizing. So while you're doing that reflecting after the game, you want to revisualize the better decision you could have made in the game, like in a future sense. So you want to visualize what it would feel like it'd be like to actually make the right decision at that point. And then that will be more likely to carry into the next game with you. But these, again, are hacks. They're ways of kind of like increasing the odds of this happening. They're ways of building the... the practice into your routine and it's going to warm its way in. But the most surefire scientific approach that has shown results in terms of research is imagery, which is the second thing I listed, and mindfulness. Okay, so those are the most studied in terms of the psychology of how to make yourself a reflective practitioner. Good luck. Nice question. Okay, the third question is from Tom Lost Kittens. Congratulations, Tom. You are one with the internet. And he asks, hi, I would like to improve. Actually, it might be a girl who's just saying Tom loves kittens. So I can't even say he. Anyway, I would like to improve at league. Where and how can I become better at analyzing my play to see the best areas to work on? The shortest and best answer is being coached. So it's much, much faster to find somebody else to look at you and tell you what they see than it is to try to figure it out yourself. Okay, because if you think about Phelps, like he never would have become the best swimmer in the world if um, if he hadn't had a path kind of laid out for him at the age of seven or eight, wherein the, the instructor kind of knew what it took to get there, if he had to figure it all out himself. Same with pretty much any sport that we spend a lot of time optimizing today and we pick up kids young and we train them. These kids cannot figure out the very complex things that you know 50 year old coaches who've been coaching their entire life and have the breadth of science behind them could lay out in terms of a training plan. So even if you can only find another 18-year-old or 22-year-old or 28-year-old on a site like lol-coaching.com and you only volunteer, and it's only volunteer, you're not even paying them, you still will get more out of it than just simply looking at your own play. Now, aside from being coached, the other thing that you should do is you watch VODs of your own play and then streams of professionals playing. Or not even, yeah, I would recommend streams more than I would recommend VODs of professional teams because you can't get a lot out of that because it skips around. It's, it's built for entertainment, right? Streams, you get to be not only watching every move that they make and every decision that they make, but you get to be thinking about it in terms of what they're talking about if they reveal their decision-making process, which can give you great insight into, into what you should be doing. Now, they've recently started debuting like lane-focused streams that follow a single champion and three people talk about it, and those are really great for this as well. So you have the model of what you should be doing and the mirror of what you are doing when you watch your VOD and you compare the two and you find decisions that are suboptimal and then you then you optimize them. And that's how you learn yourself is you invent your own system based on, based on what you see as the best. Now, once you get up to the top and there are no more models to look at, you're kind of in trouble. You have to be good enough to figure it out by yourself. But usually by the time you get there, you have an idea of how these things work and the systems within the game and you start optimizing them and it's great. Okay, thank you for that question. Next question is from Nico168B. Sorry about Nico168A, he didn't work out, so we had to terminate him, and now uh, his clone is, is asking the question. What does, by the way, that was, that was a joke, don't report me for offing a clone and then answering the other one's question. What does an optimal 24-hour schedule look like for an amateur trying to go pro? That totally depends on your situation in life. So let's just make some sur surmising. Uh, let's say that you are a college student in your second year of university and you are, I don't know, diamond two and you want to go pro the year that you graduate and or before then and take a leave. Uh, okay, so first of all, do you have any other hobbies? And do you have any other social commitments? Those are two big questions. I'm going to say, 
no other hobbies, so you're not on the swim team or the rock climbing club or like an intramural soccer team or whatever, and you don't have any social commitments, so you're not really seeing anybody right now, um, or if you are, they're also trying to go pro, maybe. Okay, so optimal 24-hour schedule looks like uh, waking up early in the morning and working out before breakfast and then going to eat breakfast, and the morning workout, you can do a run or uh, some kind of like weightlifting, some sort of maintenance thing. You're not going to hit like PRs in the morning unless you really, really are super amped and you're really you know, like slept well. So I would, uh, I would, I would, I usually do my weightlifting in the morning, and my my running later. Sometimes I swap that. It's, it's just totally up to like what if you, what you feel. Then I would go eat. Then I would take care of, um, yeah. Then I would take care of like my to dos for the day. I would try to knock them all out of the way as efficiently as possible and get them all done by around three. And then I would lay out a training plan. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I would try to train between three and like seven and then I would eat and I would try to train between like eight and ten and then I would try to go to bed. And try to make your school priority in terms of the first part of the day so that you, you really are motivated to do a good job on that based on what you can sandwich into the end. And the, every single time you drop the ball on finishing up school by the end of your work day at three, then you lose training time. And that will force you to be even more effective at what you're doing in the morning. So that, that's what I would do. Now there's a lot of little things in there in terms of like when you would do your mindfulness, when you do your gratefulness, just get it done on the schedule that works for you and be more specific in your questions if you want to know like exactly where, why I would place that one and where. Because um, I don't want to make this like a 30 minute video. But yeah, good question and thanks. Okay, next question is from Gold Sniper and they ask, how can I start my streamer career and how can I build an audience near 500 plus? Okay, so this is a really good question for my second channel, which is Weldon, not my name's Weldon. And you can find that in the links down below. And it's essentially where I'm going to be doing a lot of vlogging about the business side and the content side and the audience side of my life. And so that's that's the kind of question that he would ask. It's not directly related to eSport performance. So I will see you there. Fifth question, one, two, three, four, five, sixth question, sorry. Gold Snipers doesn't count though, because that's from my other channel. And Phil Am 64 asks, I want to look objectively at my play, but post game, my attention goes to evaluations of myself as a person. How can I refocus this? Number one, uh, go back in time and be raised with really, really high self-esteem so you never question yourself. Okay, can't do that, sorry. Um, or maybe you're at an age where self-esteem doesn't come naturally. So I would, there, there's two ways to go about this. One way is the way that um, you kind of like layer on successes. So both of these happened to me. First of all, the, I was able to, to just become more and more successful at things I, I dedicated myself to do. So I would suggest finding things and all in on them. And you kind of slowly start to build the confidence around what it is that you are capable of doing in life. And that kind of grows your self-esteem. So if you are um, trying to lead the team in shot calling, but you like are really bad at it, then don't try to lead the team in shot calling yet. Like break it down a layer. Try to lead your lane in shot calling or just try to be a roamer or something like that. If you are being asked to lead an elite sports team and you're uncomfortable with that, go back and volunteer to lead kids soccer and then work your way up from there, okay? So that, that you should do that in all areas of your life. Build up your systems of understanding because once you know you can crush it in a field, you act with confidence and you get the result and then you bring that back and you take the lessons learned from that, which um, you can usually minimize and then you, you kind of just keep getting better and better. You learn that you can learn and you improve. Now the second thing, is a support network. So I often talk about supporting success. It's the third training video in my free training that I offer on Weldon's list. So please subscribe down below to my email list. You will get all three of my like core training videos. The third one is called Supporting Success. And it talks about the three pillars that are essential for like a support network in order to keep that kind of, because you have to understand your job as a person who's training is to is to beat yourself up as harshly as you can until you get to the point where you cannot like stand it anymore and then rebuild yourself. And that's the fastest way. If you are always safe and you're always playing the safe side and you're never hurting yourself or your image of yourself, you're going to improve very slowly compared to people that A, are just wired up differently than you and can like handle the self-deprecation or B, people who beat themselves up mercilessly and push their limits and fail a lot. And then like they have the support to overcome that. So you need to build that support structure within your life as well. And I talk about how to do it in that video. And essentially there are three pillars that I see, the mentor, the cheerleader, and the peer group. And you can learn more about it there. So check it out. 
Okay, last question, and this is a narrowed down question from our fourth question from Nico, who asked about the 24 hour schedule, and they ask again, what kind of food and exercise should an aspiring esport player eat and do? Exercise, doesn't really matter, do what fits you. There are some science coming out about the efficacy of endurance training or like aerobic training and learning. So my recommendation is anywhere from two to four hours after training, engage in endurance or aerobic activities for your training. That's what I do kind of by accident, but that is coming, showing up in more and more studies. Okay, three that I've read in the last four weeks. Talk about that. Uh, so as, it, as consensus grows on it, I'll share more of that. But if you're looking for cutting edge optimization, that's something that you should look into. I think there's also a New York Times article summarizing one of those studies from 2014. Not the New York Times article, the studies from 2014, the New York Times article was recent, so you can maybe find that out. And then eating, it, should, it, it doesn't really matter. You need to eat healthy. The only thing dietary that is really important is, is fish oil and optimizing your energy. So eating, making sure that you have like a lot of fiber, uh, a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals, and not too much of anything. Everything in moderation, okay? And including calories. Calorie deficit is, is really important, by the way, for maintenance in your weight. There's something really interesting about uh, the fact that we in the modern world force ourselves into um, uh, essentially like never being in a fasted state or always being in a calorie-rich, nutrient-rich environment because there's something so sharp about how your body uh, essentially needs that fasted state to kind of have the other side of homeostasis where you're breaking apart areas of your cell that you don't need, kind of recycling them. So you should consider more the amount that you eat and the timing that you eat and focus on just getting like a normal diverse diet than you should on going crazy with optimizing the, the nutrients and minerals that you intake. Um, that's at least my opinion on the issue. There are nutritionists that agree with me and nutritionists that disagree with me. But the fact of the matter is that we just don't know a whole lot completely about the full picture of nutrition and how it interacts with our bodies at this point in the science. Because we're always learning more about the biome that inhabits our stomach and the mitochondria that inhabit our cell and what triggers them and what builds them and, and, and shakes them out in terms of me metabolism. The mitochondria is like the heart of our metabolism, if you think of it that way. And yeah. So anyway, long story short, healthily exercise, do something aerobic at least three times a week or more. and. Make sure you take your fish oil. Thank you for tuning in today. 99 episodes, what an accomplishment. And I cannot wait until tomorrow when I get to start giving stuff away for free. I hope that you guys are around and that you check it out. I hope that it's a sign of many more episodes to come. I feel like I'm finally getting my swing on this show in terms of what's going into it, the kind of content that, the, the kind of schedule that, that supports that. And of course now with higher video quality, thanks to you guys supporting the show. So now I was able to buy a used camera and kind of increase the webcam aspect of it. So thanks for that, and I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Ciao.